Good evening YouTube and today you join me back in the office obviously lockdown continues but I've got a little exciting video today I've been doing some bits to the office that those have seen on Instagram and today I'm going to release the video on building a Lego wall mount my name is James Stone and today I'll show you how to make one of these affordable wall mounts to be able to mount your Porsche, keep it off the side, free up some space and have it in perfect display. So around March last year, a friend of mine said about he could get hold of some Lego for me, worked with someone and I'd seen they'd done a Fast and Furious model. So that was my first one that I built in many, many years. And it's actually a Technique model, so not the old school Lego that you can still buy, but the sort of revised one. And I thought, you know what, for what it costs, I thought, I'll build it, I'll get a nice little mount, looked really good in the office. And I thought, you know what, with lockdown, I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna build another one. I wanted to build a Porsche, I do like the Porsche, and the RSR one was available. Unfortunately, the old orange GT ones discontinued. And I thought, I haven't really got the space for it. So like I said, put together a nice little mount, keep it out of the way. And like I said, with the lights that I've done in it, makes it a really nice little feature on the wall. Now this is for the Lego Porsche model. I haven't tried any of the other models to see if it works, but I can't see any reason why, especially the way the Technique frame's made. But in this video, like I say, it is for the RSR Porsche, and I'm gonna go through everything you're gonna need to be able to build this little mount. So firstly, you're obviously gonna need your Lego model. Once it's fully assembled, you're then ready to put it on the mount. You're also gonna need a LED lighting kit. Now, you don't have to have this. As I say, it still looks pretty good with the lighting off, but it really does draw attention to it. And for me, when the lights are off, it glows around the room really nicely. So it's certainly something I wanted to do. I'm gonna try and get a few of these kits made up so that you can buy them directly from myself. There are a few available, starting from anywhere from 10, right up to 50 pounds for the kit. You do normally get what you pay for. I tried one kit first, which was a cheaper one, and unfortunately it just didn't work very well. So I wasn't particularly happy with that, and I returned it. And like I said, I got in contact with the company that built this, and I'll try and see if I can get a bulk buy on them and pass on the discount. So stay tuned in the comments for where I can get the kit from. You also need some wall spacers. Now, as you can see, it sort of comes away from the wall by about 20 millimeters. It's not essential, but it does sort of, again, bring a bit of a feature to the model and it ties in with all my track mounts that are also mounted away directly from the wall. Nice straightforward one, two cable ties just for securing the model back. And again, this will be detailed why you need these in the video. If you are running the lighting kit, you're either going to need a USB power pack or something that's USB powered to be able to use it because the kit just runs off of a USB standard plug. And like I say, it's around five and a half, six volts. You're going to need something to mount it to. I used a two millimeter sheet alley. It's nice and light. You could use steel, but obviously it has the potential to rust. But for me, that works perfectly, it's strong enough, it doesn't flex while mounted. Again, I'll put the link in the description if I can put it somewhere in the video here. I'll also include that where I bought it from in the UK. The final bits you're gonna need are some assortment of drill bits. I think I used a nine millimeter mainly, just to make sure that obviously all the holes for the mounts and how the car's secured back. But if you've got a mixture of drill bits, obviously you can tailor it to how you want. This is more of a guide not an exact how-to and obviously if you've got a different model you may need to use different size drill bits to make it work but i think it was a nine millimeter i used and a 25 millimeter hole saw to go through for the usb power port otherwise the cable is going to hang down below the model the only final thing if you mount in like i am to a proper wall you're going to need raw plugs some screws and if it's to a plasterboard obviously plasterboard fixing so pretty standard building stuff if you are planning to mount it to a sort of UK normal wall that we use over here. So I'll overlay a clip now of the LED kit. As you can see, it's got very, very delicate wires. You really don't want to tug or pull on any of those. And the best thing to do before fitting this is just make sure it works. So I'd strongly recommend just plugging it up to USB, check all the LEDs work, there's nothing worse than putting it all together, plugging it in and finding out you've got a duff one. That would be <laughs> really tedious. Now you don't need to fully strip the model. I actually bought the LED kit and the Porsche and as I was going through it, I put it together at the same time. It just makes things a little bit easier than building it, disassembling it, putting the lights in and then trying to clip it all back. Headlights being the most straightforward, you just lift the covers up, 
push them in, and then you just route the cables through the center of the car. Now you'll have the interior light, but you need to make sure that all the rest of the loom goes towards the back. And again, if you plug it in, you can see which colors go where. It's gonna be the white lights at the front, the sort of warm white for the interior, and the blue and the red for the rear of the car. All of the lights clip in in Lego, except for the spoiler, where it comes with some 3M adhesive where you just stick it to the underside. Again, if you don't want to stick it into the model, you don't have to. It's nothing permanent. It can easily be peeled off with a bit of heat, but it does give a really nice effect with a blue glow against the red brake lights. With the model all built and all the LED lighting in place, again, it's worth just double checking everything before you go any further. As you can see from the clip overlaid here, even just laying on the carpet with that power pack plugged in, really chuffed with the results, especially when it's at night. Even when like now we've got lights on, it still has a feature to it. I'm really impressed with how well it brings the kit out. And again, just adds another element to the design of the Porsche. So with the sheet alley that you've ordered, or even if like say you go for steel, I'll put the dimensions that I used. I did it more so because of the space. I could have gone with a bigger plate. You could end up putting maybe some stickers on it with the make model of the car, maybe like a spec of it as well, Porsche, RSR. Pretty easy to get if you've got someone who can cut some vinyls up for you. Now something that I would like to try is potentially make like a racetrack, so a corner, an apex of a corner, so you could have the rumble strip, black tarmac, maybe a bit of grass either side, actually make it look like it's on the track, which I think would be pretty cool. But that could also be used if you've built the Land Rover model, you could end up taking something that looks like it's on a muddy background, wall mounted, I think that would look really cool too. So maybe something I'll try in a later video, but for the time being, we'll just go with the plain alley finish. You can now position the car on your material. Now, because you've got a protective film on this, I just took a pen, drew a rough line around the car, marked where the wheels were, and this is important for where you're gonna make your holes to secure the car down. And again, you've got that protective film on there, providing you just use a felt tip or even like a biro like I did, it's a nice sharp line without marking any of the actual metal work itself. So with the car lifted off the sheet, you can then work out where you're gonna drill all your holes. So I marked about 15 millimeter in from the inside edge of each wheel. And this will all make sense, like I say, if you watch the video all the way through as to where the mounting points will go for the car. And then you do your edge points, which is obviously what's gonna be mounted to the wall, and your 25 mil hole that you're gonna put the USB point through. And again, it all needs to be under the car so that when it's on the wall, it's not visible. With your holes all marked, it's then time to grab your drill bits, your hole saw, your files, your countersink, everything to get the job nicely finished. Now, once it was all drilled out, like I said, I did use a countersink just to clean off any sharp burrs. Again, this will make sense when we put the tie wraps through the car, because if it has got a sharp edge and you pull it through, you could cut the tie wrap, model will fall off if the tie wrap is not secure, or cable tires, we'll call it. So filed everything down, used a round file as well on the 25 mil hole saw just to make sure again, it didn't damage the USB cable that was gonna be going through for the LED lighting. With all the holes drilled, you can now peel off the protective sheet. Now, if you peeled off the protective sheet at the beginning, there is a chance that you could scratch it, having it on the worktop or drilling it. So this just keeps it all nice and tidy until you finish doing all the machining work. With that film peeled off, you'll then be greeted with quite a nice effect on the sheet that I bought. So I was quite happy to leave it for the time being until I decide what I want to do. But like I say, you could make some sort of background. You could paint it black, could paint it red, maybe make it stand out a little bit more. I also had the idea of using a black wrinkle paint, which is what I used on the rocker cover for the Renault Sport engine bay for those that saw still got some left over. So I did toy with using that. But like I say, just for this guide, I've kept it pretty straightforward and you're then obviously left with a nice clean piece to work with in the house. So as I mentioned in the video at the start, this is built more for the Porsche, but from what I can see, it would work on my Fast and Furious one, so I assume it'll work on the other Technique models as well. And essentially you feed two cable ties, one through the sort of front subframe area and the rear one. And what this does is you can then move the model on top of the sheet feed the tie wraps through your four holes that are 15 millimeters in from the wheels, and then you just tighten the tie wraps down. Now this also serves as another really good way of reducing the ride height. Now, a standard, it doesn't sit like a Porsche. A Porsche is well stanced, especially a race car. Even when you look on the box, the tires are nice and in the arches, but it's got a huge arch gap as standard. Now the beauty is, the more you pull the cable ties, the more it will pull down on the suspension, 
and lower the car and give it that proper race car look. So that in itself for me was worth putting it on a mount for. So with the cable tied down and your USB cable all fed through that 25mm hole, the model should look really clean from the top. It's then on to mounting it on the wall. So as I said in the beginning, if you didn't use the wall mounts, you can just mount it straight back to the wall. But if you've raised it 20mm, it just gives it a nicer effect. You can now look at getting your wall mounts on. With it all mounted on the wall, you're now going to need to look at power if you've included the LED kit on it. So you can either run a cable up the wall, you could have it chased into the wall that's got a converter to make sure that it's USB powered, or you could do what I do, which is run sort of three AAA battery pack. Now it's quite nice and compact, easy to service, and all you need to do is put your batteries on there. I put some double-sided tape on it and I mounted it just to the back. So the problem with mounting it right under the sheet so it was invisible would be that I wouldn't be able to switch it on and off easy and come service time, it would be a little bit tricky to get the batteries out. Whereas with it mounted off to the side, I've mounted the lid to the wall and you can just slide the pack off pull it away, change the batteries, put new batteries in, slide it down. Now with it being LED, I can't imagine those batteries will drain particularly fast. They'll be on there for a long time. It's not on all the time. So I thought at least then it's easy to switch on and off. Again, you probably could move the pack behind the panel, cut a hole out for the on and off switch, but I was happy there because you never really walk around the back side of that model in my office. That's it guys and girls, as you can see, really does change the effect of the model, keeps it out of harm's way being up on the wall. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give the video a like, and if you have enjoyed the channel overall and seen some of the other builds, please consider subscribing. Gonna, like I say, play with some more models. I've got friends with the Legos as well, so it'll be interesting to see if I can build some different backgrounds, and like I say, I will put it up on the video, or it will be on Instagram as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.